All right. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for um, a great workshop called The Art of Connecting with a Virtual Giving Day Donor. Uh, we want to make sure that you not only focus on the, the pre-campaign part of things and the day of, but also the things that you need to do afterwards. Uh, so some of our key takeaways today, uh, we're going to find out who that virtual donor is, um, identify where they fit in that in your fundraising plan, uh, how to engage and retain uh, your donors year round, uh, looking at marketing strategies uh, for the donor, although we we've had a pretty intensive uh, workshops on that already. Um, simple steps to create year round outreach campaign and, and a sample engagement plan um, is going to be provided for you in a, a template. And I really uh, want to thank Lisa Kruger with iDonate uh, for joining us today. Uh, she's currently the Director of Philanthropic Solutions for iDonate. In addition to being a CFRE, she's also a co-founder of the Give Back Tahoe Giving Day and president of Martison One, which is a, a consulting group. Um, she really understands uh, organizations. She served as a, a chief development officer and a nonprofit CEO uh, and a marketing and communications director in the nonprofit and technology sectors. And um, I'm going to go off script just a little bit to say that uh, Lisa actually worked for an, a company uh, that helped run Giving Days. So she is very, very familiar with uh, giving days and has worked in this industry. So she's not only uh, done what many of you are doing, but she's also been on the other side of, of running the uh, technology or helping with the technology with those sectors. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lisa. Thank you, Jennifer. And it's nice to meet everybody. Um, I really appreciate you carving out some time to spend some the next what hour with me and Hopefully I leave you with um, thinking about this donor that you're gonna be engaging with, you know, before, during and after in a giving day situation, but also taking that beyond just giving day. So um, thank you for that. Um, so giving days, virtual events and personalized digital, digital interactions have all have one thing in common. They all have attracted a new class of virtual donors where engagement requires intentional messaging, campaigns, around sustained giving and storytelling. Um, developing plans to specifically re-engage before and after to retain a giving day is gonna be key to the growth and success of keeping that donor engaged. So in the next hour, we're gonna walk through, but I want you all looking at it from the lens of your giving day as that digital engagement um, channel. A couple of housekeeping items is, um, any questions as we go along the way, we'll stop and um, I'll ask, but if you have any, please feel free to put them in the chat. I think uh, Jennifer and Angela are going to be keeping an eye on that for me, so um, we can stop and address those along the way. So to get a quick understanding of who is attending today, I'd love for everyone, we're going to do a quick poll, can you please select what area of the organization you represent? Maybe it's development marketing, executive leadership, and finance. This way I can kind of gear our conversation a little bit more toward, um, you know, the audience in front of us. And look at this, we are, I love how we can all see this real time. It's kind of fun. Um, development, marketing, executive leadership, most a little more development heavy, um, got a few others, and I'd love to know what those others are. So you want to put those in chat that would be great um, just so that I make sure that I'm not missing anybody but thank you so let's get started then oops so as Jennifer mentioned today the objectives are who is this virtual donor how do they fit in your plan how do you engage and retain them year-round marketing strategies for the donor. We are going to spend a little bit time of thinking about how you're engaging them prior and then after, and then walking through a simple steps to create a sustaining giving outreach pro -cam. I think sustaining giving is somebody who's going to give more than just once a year, one gift. It could be an annual campaign, recurring giving. So a lot has happened over this past year and we are seeing change, a shift. 
donors are embracing this digital pivot. So really, what does that mean? Well, donors now have been empowered by technology they use every single day and they expect their giving experiences to be the same as well. They want us to meet them online with a personalized empowered approach that they've become accustomed to. It, you know, it's all at their fingertips now. People are, of course, delivering groceries, but buying cars online I, and having them delivered to your front door. That's something I've never seen before. I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that. You know, ordering meals, home buying, exercise classes, you know, even, you know, those family gatherings, virtual celebrations, um, you know, it's all at their fingertips. In fact, I have a friend of mine who is in her 80s who is not the most technology savvy individual in the world, but ironically, she has embraced Zoom to a point where she's driving all of us nutty. She schedules Zoom meetings every single day, wants to gather and talk. So um, uh, I'm, I'm proud of her, but that technology, everybody is embracing it. Um, we also know that traditional methods of fundraising are not you know, kind of possible. They become more challenging. Those high touch imports and stewardships, those large gatherings, that catch all of donations that it's a one size fits all. It doesn't work for these donors anymore. And yet digital giving is only a fraction of the overall giving today. So stop and consider for a quick minute who will, excuse me, what part will this person play in your overall fundraising and how will you adapt your fundraising to that? So giving trends are important to take a look at. So we're just gonna take a quick dive through some giving trends because they tell more of the story that we're seeing right now. And it's good to understand that as you're trying to build out your campaigns before and after for a giving day or any type of digital engagement. So the good news is that everyone is online from Gen Z to matures. They're all pretty much comfortable with donating online, whether it's through a donation form, orgs on a website, or through Facebook, or a giving day. And they were actually comfortable prior to this COVID pandemic. We know now in the initial phases of what we've just gone through, 56% of households we're still going to be involved in some kind of charity. And they, um, the, of course, the highest segment is, of course, the individuals that they were, and it's, we're going to continue to see those rise. Um, 2020 has literally forced people to become more comfortable with technology in many ways, um, and giving our nonprofits kind of that push they needed to embrace that digital technology. And um, our nonprofits are getting super creative, and I'm super proud. You'll notice through here, though, through the online, through the website, through mail, social media, text to give, we often don't think of mail as a way to digitally engage, but you can do a direct mail piece that's a call to action. You're doing it to their website, and you're also doing it maybe to a text to give. A couple of online giving statistics that I'd love to spend some time with is... <clears throat> Online, of all donations received by a nonprofit earning a little more than a million, 14% were online. Donors over the age of 60, 47% of those gave online. 57% of people who watch videos will actually go on to make another gift. And donations, 9% donations made up the total giving. 9% actually created some linkage to your organization. You should know younger donors, 75% are actually turned off by an out-of-date website. And 34% are more likely to give on something that's more responsive. I go through these because I want you to think about when you're going to engage these folks to drive them to your giving day, you need to be thinking about how they're already engaging with you and how you need to engage with them after the day is over. A few more statistics to consider that donors that are 55 to 64 are more generous crowdfunders. So if you're doing a crowdfunding campaign and maybe that's after your giving day, you're getting them back. The goal is to get them to make give a second gift outside of a giving day. So they become an annual donor. Crowdfunding is a good way to do it. Um, donations on a branded form, 38% larger. 
And if they used a branded form, 70% will go on more likely to give a second gift. Um, <clears throat> every 100 visitors to the website, a nonprofit raises about $612. And online gifts across all nonprofit sectors average about 148. What you should know, this is where your virtual donor lives. And this is how they're engaging with you already. So how well do you believe your outreach, this poll, is reaching your donors now? Do you, are you nailing it? Are you almost there? Is it a swing and a miss? Or is it missing it completely? And what I love about our nonprofit sector is we are always so honest in our answers. So thank you. We are moving along here. Looks like we got 78% have voted so far. Um, almost there, swing and a miss, missed it completely. A few feel that they've went, got one that says they've nailed it. Um, this is great. Almost there, swing and a miss. It means you're trying and you're getting in front of them. And it's tweaking maybe a little bit of that messaging is how to get them engaged before and after. So it's encouraging to see. Oops, let's get rid of this guy. Whoops. There we go. Um, so let's meet this virtual donor. Most of our current donors have most likely had some type of a face to face engagement with interaction with us in the past. Um, many have attended events. They remember the day, the evening, the gathering, the ambiance, maybe crossing the finish line. They can visualize that true sense of feeling community and part of that organization. Now, what if you've never attended before? How will we communicate and instill that and create that sense of connection and community and create that feeling of impact? That's where intentional messaging and campaign comes in. Many of you have probably been a first time donor this year. Um, think about the experience. Do you feel connected or were you just a transaction? It's something to keep in mind as we're moving forward. The good news is everybody's online and they can join from anywhere. They can participate and donate from anywhere. So for as nonprofits, our potential donor has just moved way beyond our community where we're used to engaging with them. So here's the definition of a virtual donor. It's a first time donor who has attended or participated in a virtual type event. And when I think virtual type event, it's not just like an online gala. It could be a direct mail pace that you're driving them to your website. It could be someone visiting there. They've donated, they're new to your organization, You've never met them, and you may never meet them in person. And about each one of you right now is already visualizing this audience because they're already, you already have them, and they're already in front of you, engaging with you. There are seven characteristics around this virtual donor and things that you should be thinking about from a value when you're considering engaging them and marketing to them engaging them with during conversations and how you're messaging to bring them back and marketing. This is especially true for giving days before, during, and after. Viable, they are capable of giving to your organization. There's interest, creating that interest beyond just the core event that you brought them to. So getting them to think about you beyond just your giving day and moving forward. How do you keep them informed? Resonate, how does it connect with them? Was it a personal experience that brought them to the table? There's something that's resonating. Transformative, not transactional. As with events, and, and I will say giving days is one of them, we become more of a transaction. We are, we're asking them to donate, they donate and they kind of go away. We need to take that experience that they just had around a giving day and move it from a transactional experience to transformative. We wanna keep them informed, we wanna bring them back. And so keeping that in mind. Unify, they want to be part of a larger community or already are. The great thing with the giving day, they already feel about, they already feel like they're a sense of that larger community with a giving day. But how do we keep that connection beyond that? 
um, awareness and align. Understand the work you do, and it's aligned with your mission. And linkage is creating that link to the organization. How do we keep them connected to you going forward? So ways they engage, giving days, of course, but they're also engaging with you via maybe it's an auction, maybe it's a website, maybe it's a direct mail piece, maybe it's crowdfunding, maybe it's a phone-a-thon. They're already engaging you with, in many different ways. They also are engaging with you via Facebook or maybe Instagram if you're using it. Um, maybe there's someone that's done a DIY cam campaign. Maybe they've asked, they've volunteered. So remember, these are all ways that they can meet you online and we wanna create that personalized experience. So quick question, identify one channel other than giving day, a virtual donor is already interacting with your organization. And this one, you're gonna actually put it in your chat box. So if you wanna type it in there and just put in the chat box, how you believe you've already have someone interacting with you. And I'll read off a few as they come through. Okay, we've got Brittany with social media, Heidi with social media, Pam is doing events, Amy Facebook, Cheetah's got social media, so awesome events. Uh, utilizing resources online, Alana, great. Zoom webinars, perfect. Work up show social media, great. As you can see, they're already interacting with you. This is wonderful. So where does this donor fit in your fundraising? So who are they? Um, giving days really drive awareness, interest, and of course, raising those much needed funds for organization. They're typically a first time donor or a renewed donor, upgraded donor. And of course, fundraising isn't fundraising if you don't talk about some kind of a pyramid. I call this a twisted pyramid. Um, it really brings home the importance of this visual donor, virtual donor, actually can engage with you at any level. They can be an interest and awareness. They can also be an involvement. They can also be a major gift person. They could also be a planned gift person. So those basic principles that we all know around fundraising still pertain. And you'll also notice these initiatives here will align with your marketing. Um, as an example, we wouldn't send a major donor a text to give for $50. So thinking about the right level of engagement for them intentionally reaching out to them is going to be important. So this virtual donor is gonna play a key role in fundraising for sure. We've discussed what's changed. We've looked at current trends. We've kind of got a quick understanding of who the virtual donor is and ways that they're already engaging it and how they donate to your organization. So how do we engage and retain them? There are really two parts. One is fundraising. That's the planning, which we all think is boring and never have time for. And the other is marking, which everybody refers to as the fun part. <laughs> um, so quick poll. Do you currently build out a complete donor plan as part of each campaign? Thinking specifically about your giving day. Did you build out, you built out your giving day plan, but did you build out a, comp a campaign for your donor engagement and how you were going to bring them in, retain them, and keep them close. So we're gonna launch that poll. Did you nail it? Are you almost there swinging a miss or missed it completely? I feel like I'm watching sort of like this little lottery thing with all the little numbers going up and down. Um, looks like you're almost there swinging a miss. Missed it completely, kind of even across the way. Um, you're not alone. This is typically a piece that's missed at any specific campaign. Well, 15%, 45% of you are almost there, which means you had a component, but maybe it needed to be fine tuned just a little bit more. As I started to say, it is a piece that does tend to get missed on the overall campaign. So I'm going to, so let's. Let's, um, let's then dive in 
And it really does start with the planning. Two parts, fundraising and marketing. Um, I've had a lot of organizations say to me that are, they're too small, they don't have time. Um, when it comes right down to it, the real issue is that you don't have time not to do it. Because if you don't, you're gonna be scrambling to react to deadlines, creating content. Your plan is gonna actually serve as a guide for your decision along the way. If you have to pivot, it's there for you to review. And it's also a point kind of kind of guide you forward. Fundraising and marketing, the plan has to be done together. It can't be done silos. It must align with each other. Um, it's not the other way. You don't build a marketing piece and then the fundraising. The fundraising comes first. Um, you must have a good foundation in place from a MarTech. MarTech is your marketing and technology. So it's, do you have a good CRM of record? Do you have diverse engagement tools for after the campaign is to engage these donors? Um, and for the purposes of going forward here, we're going to talk about this. Think about that we are creating a, um, a returning or first time giving day donors as an example when we talk through this. And I'm going to caution you, plans, I'm a big planner because um, I need something that I can follow and then execute because when I'm in execution mode, I don't have time. I just roll, uh, probably like most of all of you. Um, planning doesn't have to be overly complicated. In fact, I always say you keep it as simple as possible. Um, so defining your outcomes. When you're getting ready to reach out to these donors, and I know we've probably gone through some of this with some of the other presentations, but as you're thinking about re-engaging this donor, again, who gave last year, what do you want to do with them? What do you want to do with them after the event is over? You have to have a plan for that. So you need to pick a goal. What is your focus? Maybe it's, I'd like to educate donors about a specific campaign to encourage them to be maybe an annual donor or giving a second gift. Select a focus. Where do they fit? Are they renewed? What is their typical engagement? Are they awareness? Is it interest? Is it um, involvement? Moving them, as I said, from, from transactional. How do we keep, create that relationship? Of course, what is that financial goal? Defining that specific ask. And as I mentioned earlier, maybe it's the goal for the specific ask to just give a second gift outside of the Giving Gay campaign. So as an example here for the next year, a percentage of group of donors will contribute to the following. Dollars raised, number of donors donate, become recurring gifts, maybe gave a major gift, volunteered, or a second gift to the organization. So think about your Giving Day donors, the ones who gave last year and where you'd like them to be this year. And then think about the ones that are giving this year and where you want to move them to. And you have to understand the past to succeed in the future. It's time to understand your donor's habits. Who lapsed? Where are they engaging with you? So this will help you build and guide what you're going through. If you don't do the past, you won't understand how they're already interacting with you. So, you know, who gave over the past five years? Yeah, maybe just two years. Um, I have somebody who always stresses five. So lapsed donors, recurring gifts. How are they gonna fit in your campaign? How much did they give? How did they give? Tells you pretty much how you're gonna engage with them. Best method, you know, of outreach after. Is it, you know, did they come through on a giving day, a peer-to-peer, -peer, a website? How do they engage with you? Because that's where you're gonna probably drive them the next time around. You also want to define a metrics for success. So build your benchmark so that at the end of your event, you can go back and go, yep, we nailed it. We did 500 last year, we did a thousand this year. We had 50% more in results. We, did, we reached 8,000 donors this year as part of that campaign. And we raised 1.5 as opposed to 1.1. So have a metrics to go back and benchmark against. So this is my favorite slide right now. So I want you all to think about your giving day, April 6th, right around the corner. You're putting all of this effort 
social media email, maybe you've got some digital stuff going on your website, maybe you're doing videos and you're driving everybody to your giving day. Of this subset here, how are you reaching out to those donors that are returning this year? What kind of call to action are you giving them? Have you segmented them out and reaching out to them and asking them maybe to upgrade their gift this year? Things to be thinking about. What I really want to stress is when your day is over, you're not done. It is now taking them and building them and putting them into your plan. Are you going to invite them to a virtual event? Are they going to in there? Are you added them on your donation field? Are you thanking them? So we need to also think about, yeah, they get a receipt when they give, but you need to thank them after. Whether it's a board call, where it's video, thank you whether it's another letter, we all have one of these. It's so easy to record a quick little video and send it out because it doesn't have to be formal because they want it authentic. They want it coming from you. Um, could be from your ED, could be from a donor. It could be from some a participant, but think about how to engage them afterwards. Um, also having a clear understanding an objective to the goals of the plan helps you then define this. Having the right digital foundation in place is going to be important. So I always say, pay, take a few seconds and look in house. What digital resources do you need? Take a quick inventory. Do you have the tools in house to support that CRM? How's your website? Are you going to use events or peer to peer after your giving day? Does it meet your needs? Are you incorporating more than one donor experience? So as you can see, donors can come to you in for a lot of different ways. And you should be thinking about how do I reach them? I'm reaching via Facebook. Maybe it's a direct mail campaign. Maybe it's my website. Maybe I'm asking them to volunteer. Maybe it's also a peer to peer. And oh, by the way, I'm driving some action again from Facebook. So incorporating just more than one experience to bring them. As I mentioned, these virtual donors and our donors today, they want to interact in the ways that they actually are already interacting with you. Um, and then do we understand most effective channel? Do we understand what worked before and how we can improve upon it? So after your giving day, it's a thank you. Your campaign may be over but the renewal has just begun. Um, the donation does, the donor journey does not end with the gift. In fact, the donor journey is just the beginning with a gift. And you have to think about it. It's the circle that keeps going round and round. When your day's over, make sure you review and reflect. How did it compare to your goal? Did you stay focused? Where did it fit in the fundraising strategy? Did we move from transactional? Did we meet our goals? Did we ask? And then the results. So take a time just to take a look and reflect and review. Understanding there's continued engagement. Method of thanking it. I mentioned videos and emails. Informing them about the dollars. Looking for additional ways to engage. Volunteering. Adding them to your organization's outreach cycle. I cannot tell you how many times I've got organizations that will finish a, a capital campaign, event, or something and they forget to add them to all of the outreach that's already happening. So send them their annual report, send them a newsletter, get them a success story, give them the information you're trying to get out there. It's all about reaching out and starting that conversation and then celebrate, invite them to celebrate in the success that what you're going through. Um, all of these continued engagements also can be your campaigns for keeping them informed, nurturing them and driving them to a second gift and driving that relationship. And celebrate. You have built a plan. You've executed the campaign and you raised the funds. It's really, really important to take a few minutes to pause, to celebrate, no matter how large or small. For giving day, we always build in that, you know, celebrate component. 
But if you're not doing a giving day and you've done another campaign, take a moment to celebrate. I've had some folks say, hey, what happens if it was really not successful? I believe success is if you got one new gift that you didn't have before, you need to understand that and celebrate that. It goes beyond the gift. You've engaged a donor, a person. I'm going to quickly talk about marketing communities. Naturally, you want to make sure that every, many people know about a cause, the problem, our organization. Um, the reality is too many of our organizations are just focusing on messaging and raising awareness. As you're reaching out to these folks, know that there doesn't come a point where you, you have to stop just raising awareness. You have to inform, you have to invite, you have to engage. Engaging this virtual donor, you have to be intentional. You need to take them on a donor journey. I always think about when you're engaging a donor who's donated to you before giving day, take them on the journey. What's the journey that you want to be on? You want to know what happened. You want to be informed. You want to be invited back again. You want to be appreciated. You've got your day of. And then after the journey, you also want to be informed and you want to be brought into you know, the organization closer, and you want to ask them to give again. One of the things that's important with a virtual donor, it's the messaging is intentional. Particularly now they're being completely bombarded with so many messages and images. So thinking about how you are going to distinguish your organization from others is a really important. So what is the most successful method of digital outreach that you are currently utilizing? This is a poll. Um, think about beyond your giving day. So maybe we won't, or maybe giving day is your most successful. Um, from a poll, we'll start the poll up. You'll can choose from an email, a website, social media, giving day, crowdfunding, peer-to-peer, -peer, and events. I'm not sure if we have the poll being launched today, so... Oh, there it is. And actually, as we're going through, I see a question. Somebody's asking, how do you normally set metrics when you don't have past numbers? So what I would think about is you do have an objective for your campaign. You probably also have an idea of how people are already engaging with you. And so utilizing those numbers is really a good place to start. Um, you also may have some peers out there that are doing past events that you can maybe sometimes look them up on the web and see how well they've done. Um, so there are ways to garner um, numbers as needed. Okay, look at this poll, email. I'm glad this came up because my next slide is on two slides down. It's going to be an email. Emails and websites are definitely the most popular. It's because it's also the most cheapest. Um, and I love somebody made a comment, Barb, that telling our stories in the media is also a successful outreach. Yes, that is a great way to do it if you have that ability to get to your media. I am going to click through to the next one. So with a marketing plan, remember you've got that fundraising plan as your guide. Um, what are the marketing components? What is the messaging? Successful campaigns are built together with alignment and focus. What is the message we wanna convey? Desired outcome, what's the method? Communication before, during, and after. And then building out a calendar of timeline deliverables. This may start to feel super, super overwhelming, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it can be very done at the basic level and you will be much more successful because you have something to rely on. How do you tell your story? And I love Barb mentioned stories. So stories, um, you don't, you're not telling a story for the sake of telling a story. And when I said there's storytelling, but you all as an organization have a story to tell. There are type of content. And it needs to fit into that bigger picture. For me, I think of stories are, think of a chapter of a book. Each chapter builds on the next to engage the reader. Every time you engage the donor, it's an opportunity to share the next chapter. 
the progress that's been made, an exciting new program, you know, what point are you in your story? And so as you're building out this donor journey that has started with a gift last year, that is bringing them to giving again this year, to beyond that gift going forward and how you want to bring them, I love being able to talk about that story. What is that donor journey? Um, and I mentioned there's events and videos and social media, email and website videos, as I mentioned earlier, they don't have to be freshable. You've got a, a cell phone in front of you um, and it could just be a quick um, two second thank you and it's off. Email marketing, I wanted to spend a few, few minutes on it because we don't think of email as digital, but it actually is. It's also the highest, the highest ROI of any marketing channel. It's about $40 for every dollar spent. It's also one of the easiest ways to engage and always free. And then the open right now with emails is 15 to 17%. And 16% of those donors who support you from an email are doing so on a mobile device. People are reading them right now. And they're reading them at, at the most untraditional times. They're actually reading them on a Sunday. They're reading them on a Saturday afternoon. So those times that we're engaging them has really changed. Social media, super important part of communicating, and it's often um, used a lot due to the price point. I am a big believer, people love it or hate it. Um, throughout my nonprofit career, I've had people like use it because it's free, they don't, I'm gonna make a suggestion here. And I think it's already been suggested by others. Pick one, pick one to start with, one that maybe you know your donors are already there. What is the focus for this audience? Is it a donation? Is it joining the newsletter? And how do you measure that success? So if you're picking social media and you're picking Facebook and do it and then move on. But you also have to make commitment there. And what I say with any social media channel is you also have to have, um, you know, what is it goes? What do you wanna do with these people? So after giving days over and you're driving them to social media, maybe they're giving there, maybe you're making awareness, what are you going to do with those people when they're over and how do you re-engage them? Because we're talking about how do we take donors that have engaged with you and moving them on to a second gift, but also then moving them closer to you as an organization. You have to have a plan for Facebook. You have to have a plan for where these folks are going to go. Now, putting that plan to action, um, So I've created a virtual donor simple campaign checklist that you're all going to get. If I click here, see if I can get it open. Let's make it super big. I did want to show it to you. So it's a literally a simple checklist. It's what we've gone through today. Define your outcomes. Do some goal setting, historical review. Here's that engagement plan. Expectations of marketing. Maybe there's some deliverables. Here's continued engagement, your thank you message, communication then afterwards, adding them to your current marketing. Donor development, they've got to be assigned for follow-up, adding to future outreach. Identify that next step on that donor's journey. And I've also provided some helpful resources here. This is, was built in Smart Sheets. I love Smart Sheets because it allows me to um, get super detailed as I want to, but take the time to build yourself out a planning checklist and an actual engagement calendar. So. And then this is a simple returning donor marketing timeline. Hopefully everybody can see this again. Um, I put this together because we often struggle about what do we do to engage our folks? What campaigns should we be reaching out to them? So prior to your campaign, I would love to put dates in here for you, like two weeks before you do this, five weeks before you do this, eight weeks before you do this. But it really also depends on the messaging and what you're already doing with outreach. Most of the time you can incorporate this in, but before your campaign, giving day specific in this case, but maybe it's another campaign that you're doing. 
Determine that list from your data review. Have you provided ways for them to get involved? How was their dollars used to impact? Thank them again for that past gift. Introduce them to the upcoming campaign. And maybe in this case, we're consider upgrading their gift this year. You guys have some great tools within your giving day. Um, Jennifer was telling me about Ray's, so the ability for somebody to go in there and continue to give and do recurring gifts. You have some great tools at your disposal. Use them. Use them to engage them and use these ways to, in, from a campaign standpoint, to bring them to the table. And then after, it's really about nurturing your donors and putting them in that cycle already. You know, after the campaign, there are, what's the goal? Volunteer, come more involved, second gift, method of that thank you, communication going out. Your communication should be sharing with their donors, share how the dollars are raised, getting them involved, bringing them closer, inviting them to that interaction. Remember, we said that virtual donor wants to be a sense of community. They want to be involved. Um, marketing contents, I, you know, like on Facebook, you know, added to all your research newsletter, you could have a specific campaign for them. Donor follow-up, we just talked about earlier. And then campaign, campaign ideas, this could all be about recurring giving going forward. So I hope that I've left you with some ideas about how to outreach to your donors after the day. Um, so my question to you, and this is a, an easy one, would adding a virtual donor focus to your plan increase your fundraising and donor retention? And I'm hoping it all comes across, yes, look at that. Um, and I think we're good at the moment. I, um, yep, see everybody saying yes, love it. Thank you, thank you. Um, as you can see, the good news is this virtual donor require intentional messaging specific planning, storage, and focus. And the good news is that this translates to all of your donors. And so what you've just seen, you can translate to every donor that you're outreaching to and engaging with. A um, Couple of quick credits. Um, a lot of this came from Slide Caravel, uh, Slide Caravel Unisplash, Statistics Network, um, NB Tech for Good, Giving USA. Wanna make sure I mention those. Um, and then I want to say thank you. Any questions that you want to reach out to? I know we have time left here. We did this so that we could have um, ability to answer questions. Yeah, and I do have um, one. You talked about the ones with the metrics and past uh, numbers. Uh, we have one comment that said, I worked through a number of different fundraising platforms, some of which uh, have a don't add these emails to your mailing list policies. Um, when is it, or even is it appropriate to reach out to past donors? Yeah. So if you've got, so that I, I think that's a twofold question. So you've got folks that say, don't put me on your list. And typically that's because they're so used to spamming. Um, what I would say with someone like that is um, pick up the phone, give them a thank you, call them and let them know how much you appreciate it. Then you could ask, can we keep you informed of what you'd like to see and what would you like to see? So can we keep you informed? What would you like to see? Um, maybe they'd be okay to just getting some direct mail pieces from you. Maybe they would love just having your annual report. So they're not necessarily telling you no. What they're telling you is they don't want to be spammed and they don't want to be engaged over and over. So that's the first piece. Um, and Jennifer, I'm sorry, what was the second half of that? <laughs> I wrote it down. And I didn't. Is it when basically when is it appropriate to reach out to them at what point um i think it's appropriate to reach out to a donor at any time to be honest with you um i love being able to do the phone call i love um being able to to share with them what your dollars did so maybe giving days over they've gotten their email receipt you know, a week or so after you're done, you should be telling them what a great success you had. Maybe you're sharing them with your, you know, what the dollars are going to go to. 
maybe it's a month later that you're sending them, you know, your dollars at work. So it is, um, a donor really should be touched at least seven times as far as I'm concerned. You should be reaching out them throughout a year. You shouldn't be bombarding them week after week after week. Um, I always like to say, put yourself in that donor journey. How are you going to be one? Now, how do you want to be engaged? We're so passionate about the work we do. We, we want to hear about it all the time. Keep in mind that we want to be thoughtful in our outreach. Um, but I think donors should be touched at least once a month. And it's not always an ask. Sometimes it's just being told a thank you. Sometimes it's, you know, here's our work. Thought you'd like to hear about a success story. Throwing an opportunity to somehow become involved. Um, and then there are appropriate times to ask. All right, we have one other question here. Uh, do you have any suggestions for expanding online audience? How do um, expand your potential donor base as well. I think those are can be two different things. Uh, but uh, one thing I will say before Lisa uh, talks, we did have a marketing and campaign creation webinar that Angela Palmer, mm -hmm. um, our director of marketing did uh, at the um, end of December and one at the beginning of January that I encourage you to check out, but I'll let Lisa also answer that question. Uh, yeah, so suggesting to expanding your online um, donors and base. So uh, when we think of online, I think of virtual engagement. So they're not always, you know, like on Facebook. And so creating methods for them to engage with you and share beyond. I'm a huge proponent of peer to peer fundraising or DIY fundraising. On average, a DIY fundraiser, peer to peer fundraiser will bring five new donors to your organization per fundraiser. Um, so I'm a big proponent of that because that's going to be somebody who's close to you already through a relationship. And that's how you want to bring donors in. Um, as far as expanding that online audience, if you're thinking about, you know, Facebook, you think you have to think about that Facebook person and how you're engaging with them. I mentioned what's the goal. Is the goal for that person to just like you on Facebook or do you want them to convert so they're spending more time with you on your website? So how do you get them there to that first gift? Um, I think right now with the opportunity to do things virtually, so maybe you're doing a presentation like this that could be anywhere drawn from anywhere, um, you have an opportunity to think beyond your fall wall. So share your story, get it out there, um, invite others to, to join um, as far as expanding. And I would also say, you know, you've got organizations out there that are doing things similar to you. I love partnering. For me, partnering with another organization, coming together and maybe doing something online together, you've doubled your exposure. So just a, another thought. And speaking of peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, in two weeks, we actually have a right. webinar <laughs> that Neon One is leading. Uh, and they, Neon One is our technology partner. Um, some of you may know them previously as Civicore, uh, but they are hosting a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising uh, specifically about giving days. So it's, it's very relevant to all of you. If you've never created a fundraising page, I encourage you to do that on your profile and see how it works. That is the easiest way for you to then help others. It could be your board, it could be volunteers, it could be your biggest fans. Um, but if if that isn't a component of your campaign strategy, I highly, highly encourage you to figure out how to do that. Um, there's a lot of really great data out there about how much more money you raise because you have others sharing their own stories about how they interact with your organization. And it can be a very, very powerful fundraising tool. Um, there is no additional cost for you to have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising on Arizona Gives. It is automatically included with that $50 refundable registration fee. 
Um, so, and you can use that uh, any time of year. You don't have to just use it um, during Arizona Give. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, the, the links are on our azgive.org backslash training page. Um, you can register for that. You can view all of our past webinars. This webinar will be out there as well. Um, and I just want to give a final call out for any other questions. I haven't seen anything else come through. Or if you're brave, you can unmute yourself and ask the question live as well. Yeah, I'll make a comment on peer-to-peer. Um, I love peer-to-peer -peer when it comes to board members. You know, we've got these board members that are reluctant about asking, getting them to set up their own peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page and getting them to share that out. It's one of the easiest tools and they love being able to do it because it's sort of, they don't have to pick up the phone and talk to somebody. So um, think about that as part of your giving day, but also future campaigns that you're looking at. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have questions, uh, we've got Lisa's email and phone number here. If you're interested, you can always reach out to us at Arizona Gives. Live or the, the ticketing um, with questions is available on the website. So when you go into the login page for nonprofits, you can click that support button. Uh, and get in touch with one of us that way if you have uh, questions. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll see you at the next workshop. Thank you, everybody. Have a great giving day. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Okay.